Yes, the boy stepped in the fountain of youth, and now I'm about to travel up to the mountain of truth. See what some rust listen to the story they tell about some old earth and how the end warm prevail. For me, the journey to document dust and work. He's some zebra laugh a little, get in tune with the earth. Journey of a student trying to get his PhD. So got more face than character made by Stan Lee. This is Namibia through my eyes. An experience that they could never deny. Tree. Ooh, what's up? Welcome to part five, and what is also going to be the last part of this video series. Um, I guess you've now at this point seen the giraffe. Hope you thought it was cool. The reason I decided to make this the last part of the video series was, although I guess we have, um, after where this video ends, we've been in Namibia for I think at this point three more weeks and we're got a little bit longer before we leave but i i made this because or at least consciously i made this because i wanted to show something show a different perspective of something of, of what field work is like maybe document it in a way it hadn't been documented before and i guess i also try to say something interesting whenever um, I get in front of the camera and I felt as though at that point I had said everything interesting that needed to be said. Um, I didn't want to make the redu redundant footage any more redundant and I was really happy with where it ended. Um, I guess the way it ends is quite on a positive note the trip is amazing um since then we've been we've been trucking through the last bit um we're almost done we've got as of right now six days left uh six work days left so enjoy um i might show up again later to explain some stuff but i hope you enjoy it you're good <laughs> and I see the lowest of the low. Normally, this place is a It's still our road. Like buses. Even stopping. And... Now I'm at oh, just to show people the. Yeah. I guess it's cool tourist wise. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's not. Yeah, it's, it's like geology. People. Hey, there's a hunger for geology. Yeah, clearly. I'm having like a miniature freak out right now because there are so many cars. Heading 
and just people walking around everywhere. So much. It's the ocean. <laughs> oh my. National murder ground and the sand dunes in the front. returned for me it has been like 10 seconds for you some amount of minutes um i guess now uh, is a good time to explain we're in svakamund and what you can see and we were graciously hosted uh, and taken around by a geologist and local geologist named bronco so first you're going to see a video of us or a series of videos footage of us driving around through interesting geologic sites in the region. Um, you're going to see the same transition zone that we're working on uh, back here in the Nile Cleft, all the way over there at the coast. Um, probably won't be able to notice it, but it's there, um, as well as some cool igneous features and just beautiful scenery. they're small and then this is nature's way as it grows the trunk deforms purposefully and what that does is it, it shreds the, 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 the leaf and so it looks like it's got multiple leaves but it's actually only two leaves and, and they've just been split um, and what it does it, it, it creates um, like over there where they start to get bigger it, it's just, just a small little ecosystem um, and it, it retains just a bit more moisture when the sun comes up from the evening. Uh, from the evening, it will retain a bit of moisture. So whatever moisture is in the air, it can capture, and it stays a bit cooler in there for a while anyway. So it's a bit of a differential. female, which is the grand old lady, has, has got a, a cone and it's on the basis of, of that day they classed this within the, the conifer family. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> the 
conifer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Family. <laughs> How do they reproduce them? By air or? Uh, yeah, by air. And I think it, it is also said that these beetles help in the germination process as well. Huh. Yeah. So the, the, the leaf on top, uh, most desert plants have got a lot of wax in their leaves and the bark to right. keep moisture in. Uh, but th these guys on the leaf underneath, um, the, the little micro pores there, and then they'll open up when there's moisture and, and capture a bit of moisture as well. There's a few. dry uh, and in a severe drought, the zebra, the oryx, will chew the leaves. Um, and so the, you can see this has been chewed. And because it's so stringy, uh, they, they can't break the leaf off. Um, and this is quite old now. And so it's, like, it's like chewing the candle and uh, getting as much moisture and nutrition out as possible. And I've got a specimen time you can actually still see the So the bark is 100% is wax, and this will just demonstrate. It, it, you can see its wax is burning. Smell that. Mm. weird it's out of fear um, oh that's a lovely shot as well except they're far away um, so w w when they they take fright they do that they jump up like this and you think actually it's slowing them down they're right. being chased by a lion or something right. it's the last thing you want to be doing but that's nature's way the English word is stot and the Afrikaans word is pronk which everybody uses in southern Africa pronking it's quite a beautiful motion there why did your family go to Joanna's Um My dad uh, came out during the depression. Truly feels like I could be in San Antonio right now and say, remember the Alamo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
fuel as well. So oh, wow. I don't know what temperature you need to get to recrystallization to magnetite. Well, it'll be a titano magnetite uh, with ilmenite because magnetite weathers very quickly. Mm. Uh, whereas you don't see much of an oxidation aureole around these. A little bit there. Uh, but it's, it's just peppered with it, you know. So this is a mag anomaly, second to none. Mm. So it's a very mappable unit mm. geophysically. Right. And it looks a bit different to, to what we saw. This looks more like a schist. Yeah. Um, you don't see glass in this. You've got a bit of veining already. And a lot of this weathering too. It'd be fun to climb up there. Yeah. yeah. A bit of a slip and slide on that lot. And now for the big time, the flight. Enjoy the flight. It's super cool. I'm really sorry all the footage is shaky. I don't know how expensive of a camera and stabilizer I would have had to get to make it not shaky. I really apologize, but that plane is really small. Uh, it was a great time. Um, things you can see, the dunes, the mountains. We go over the same area that we went with Bronco uh, by car. So you get a different perspective of some of the same features. Maybe you can recognize some of them. And then as well, you can see what the former coastline was. Uh, when sea level was quite a few meters higher. It's about a couple kilometers inland from what the coast is right now. And you, you'll notice it in this really stark, light, dark, um, wavy line at one point in the video. So that's what a changing climate can look like. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And, and I had one of those for a while. That, that's, that's you work hard. I mean, it's nice open air and everything, but you, you hold the wing and you, you're the shock absorber. You're... <laughs> <laughs> and you did this for 19 years? Right. 19 years you flew that? Yeah. Wow. I would never do that. <laughs> this one I've been flying for about seven.
I guess this is mostly over now. Um, end of a chapter. Yeah, end of the series. Um, no need to be dramatic. I'm always dramatic. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. It's been really cool making it. I've been really privileged to be here. Um, honestly, it's changed my life in a lot of different ways. Um, and I will, uh, I'll leave it at that. Nothing more to say. Nothing more to add. Enjoy, uh, some cheetah footage. Find a group of <laughs> I was leaning up. <laughs> just ran right up. I was like, ah. walk on top of it.
my god, look at their tails. Yeah. I guess this is a this is a good time for you to find out what your limit is. Like you know, you'll find out how far you can go. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of like that. Let's see how far I can go before I break. You know, you got to know when you break, and you rebuild yourself up, and then you're stronger.